Good afternoon and welcome to Trade Talks. I'm your host, Jill Malandrino, global markets reporter at NASDAQ. Joining me all the way from Chicago is Mark Sebastian. He's the founder of Option Pit and also author of Trading Options for Edge and also one of my favorite volatility traders. And that's exactly what we're going to talk about today or different uh, volatility trading strategies. But Mark, let's get into it first. What is the current volatility landscape like? Because it looks much different than last year. Oh, yeah, it's, it's changed entirely. Um, I think uh, a lot of people that have a recency bias that, you know, what's recently happened is the way things are going to keep going, um, have been kind of taken, taken off, off guard by uh, the way markets have exploded. Uh, right now, the VIX, uh, the SIBO volatility index, uh, is in what we call backwardation, which means the index is actually trading above the futures. Mm -hmm. Why is that important? When the VIX is trading above this, those futures, when it's in backwardation, market returns tend to be negative. And a lot of the things that we rely on, fundamentals and technicals, just throw them out the window. Mm -hmm. uh, the market is, is illogical. And, and that's really what's going on right now, which is why we've seen a lot of the price acts, just money flowing out of where, where, it, can, where it can find um, profit and to kind of reallocate or, it, you know, it's flowing really into safety. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's, it's kind of laughable, right? Uh, we're worried about interest rates running, going higher, right? So what do we do? We sell stocks and buy bonds, right? And and that's really what's going on right now. So that that's what we mean by um, illogical. None of that makes sense if you think about it. So would you say that the low vol days are behind us? At least for the time being. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think trying to short volatility in this environment is is kind of a losing proposition. A little bit reckless. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it is reckless. Um, and a lot of volatility traders were out there saying we're vol traders, but really all they were doing was selling volatility. Um, now the real vol traders are, are coming to the forefront. And, um, you know, there's a lot of opportunity out there, right? The market is really moving up and down. I mean, there, for an actual trader, this is a trader's trader's market, right? The ability to buy and sell and, and get in and out is, is just, we haven't seen that in three years. But let me ask you this question, though. 2017 was an anomaly because all we did was go straight up. I believe mm -hmm. we didn't have um, any days in 2017 where there was that 1% move up or down. But in the same token, to be up or down five, 600 points a day, mm -hmm. would you consider that normal? Because it feels as if a lot of traders have been caught off guard here. Oh, this is not normal by, right. any, by any means. But it will stay illogical for a while. Mm -hmm. uh, typically, these big vol events tend to last between two and eight months uh, where things are really, really crazy. 2008 was closer to the year, but that was at its most extreme. Mm -hmm. The closest event we've had to what we're experiencing right now uh, was the China crisis in 2015, where we saw the VIX go all the way up to, into the 50s, and then things stayed volatile for the next five months. Well, things really blew up very end of January, so we're probably about halfway through this. Now, the one thing I would say is, we saw that big sell-off last week, Thursday and Friday, and the VIX barely got to 25. Mm -hmm. So it appears that we may be winding out of it. Typically, these, at the ends of these events happen when the S&P 500 hits a, a, re, a recent low. So I'm talking below the lows of, of early February, but the VIX gets nowhere near those highs when you know, overnight on, on February 5th, VIX got up over 45, 40, uh, right. all the way up to 50. So I think we're starting to cycle out of this vol event. But um, it, it appears we still have a few more weeks to work our way through. Maybe earnings pulls us out. So how are you trading this environment then? Obviously not selling vol. No. <laughs> well, you know, there, there's opportunities to right, sell vol. Right. I, I think there, that it's a trader's environment. So I'm buying volatility on the way up and selling it on the way down. And uh, I'm trying to find areas where I think when things get really oversold, I'll step in. So uh, earlier in the week, Facebook gets absolutely torched. Um, but that was an excellent opportunity to step in and buy some calls. Within an hour or two, uh, one can, can make, some, make some decent profits. Look at the way we trade at the end of the day, yesterday. Um, we sold off in the, the NDX, the NASDAQ 100, was down 270 points, mm -hmm. just absolutely blew the doors lower, and then in the last 10 minutes rallied 50 points right back. So there are these really great tradable moments. Mm -hmm. um, if I was an investor, um, I'd be looking for long-term value. Apple, I think, is starting to look inexpensive. Facebook is having its Equifax moment. Um, it's going to start looking interesting around 140, 145. Um, I would rather own Facebook personally I, as a trader and investor. I'd rather own Facebook for 165 on the way up to 180 right. than 150 on the way down to 135. So I'm looking for things to turn around. What macro catalysts are you watching? 
uh, macro, I think earnings season. Um, and watch non-farm payrolls, that continues to be really important. The, the wages, uh, people, the wage growth is really important. Mm -hmm. that's, that's been the big driver. People are still worried about interest rates, although at this point, um, I think a, a, if we keep going at this rate, um, a, a fourth hike this year is completely off the table, mm -hmm. um, especially with the 10-year now, 2.75. I don't think you're gonna see uh, the Fed, the next time the Fed meets, uh, you're gonna see them coming off of that fourth rate hike. They're gonna be a lot uh, closer to 100, zero for just three rate hikes this year. All right, and to wrap up, tell us about the book. It's your second book. It is my second book. It's called Trading Options for Edge. And, um, you know, a lot of books are out there that explain the what. You know, what is an option? What is a call? What is a put? There isn't a lot out there that actually is explaining how do professional traders think? How does one formulate a position and manage it and trade it? So what I really did was I took all kind of the major ways of using options and developed them uh, a trading kind of model from start to finish, you know, a checklist. So here's what I'm looking for to get into a trade. Here's how I'm managing the trade and here's what I'm getting out. Uh, in addition, we do a, a, dis a discussion on just-in-time hedging and, and some other pieces to long-term investing. But um, it, it's really, best I can tell, the only true how-to book when it comes to option trading. It's not a what is options. It right. is a here's how to actually make money trading these things. And, um, you know, it's certainly not a, a beginner book, but uh, I, I think once someone has dipped their toes in options, it's, it's the next book they should get. All right. Well, thank you very much for joining us at Market Site. Thank you for having me. And thank you, traders, for joining me throughout the day. I'm Jill Malandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ.